Mary Helena, Chapter 5 Jesus was back for the summer. He was charged like a wild beast and my insides screamed for his physical attention. It was next to impossible to get it. My parents were watching every move I made. Sammy Simpleton and his parents came over every Sunday to make plans for my life. Liz was also getting pressure from her parents to marry a priest or a lawyer. One must forget about childish ideas and be practical. And everyone knows, without money, life is a bitch. So was I. And I was in love with a true bastard who rejected everything about his ancestors. Our ancestors were us, as we were more stupid than now. There is no future in honoring the past, making a religion on an altar of an out of an altar with horns that burnt animal fat and parts day and night. We are foolish animals. I was standing close to Jesus in the synagogue. He was talking to John with a few elders listening in with her jaws hanging. Sammy Simpleton made a noble effort of confrontation with Jesus. How can we be our own ancestors? If you were a son of Israel, you reject your own blood. Blood is all the same. The Arabs and the Egyptians, the Greeks and the Romans, the Africans and Chinese, we are all the same animal. Animal? Man is not an animal. Man is made in God's image. And women are... Women are his helpers. That is a mad notion. If anything, we are women's helpers. Protect them while they are pregnant and care for them so they can have a calm and safe environment where their child can take its time to grow up with other children. Our whole system of business is a confrontation with life. We make women our slaves, embrace war and pillaging, and move piles of gold from one bunch of murdering kings to the other. Jesus was, ex still, was still explaining things to Sammy Simpleton when my mother led me away. I don't like you listening to Jesus. My life does not belong to you, mother. I love Jesus, and when he leaves Galilee to go to Istanbul, I am going with him. I don't care if you disown me, or cut me out of your will, or sell my reservation in the cemetery. I would have continued, but I received a slap on the face. According to the laws of our ancestors, I was wrong to believe my life belonged to me. There were laws, and I was under them. Until I left my father's house, his word, the word of our ancestors, was my law. I was given house arrest. I was permitted to go to synagogue, and I was permitted visitation rights from Sammy Simpleton and Liz. Sammy came to help me with the holy scriptures. Sammy, you are kind and clever. I will not marry you. I'm not going to marry. Then why do you court me? To please my parents. It dawned on me that his sexual interest might be similar to what sometimes happened with Liz and me. I smiled and kissed Sammy on the cheek. He blushed and started talking about Moses and his tent inside the tent, the holy place where no one was permitted. And he told me about the children they took as slaves when the Israelite army destroyed some city-states. I watched him and listened and I could see that he had seen the same things as Jesus had seen. My parents were very happy to see that I was seeing Sammy, more often with an element of enthusiasm. Everyone was a little surprised when Sammy went to a monastery, and I climbed out of my bedroom window and went with Jesus to Istanbul.